The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O oh God, you make us glad by the yearly festival of the birth of your only Son, Jesus Christ. Grant that we, who joyfully receive him as our Redeemer, may with sure confidence behold him when he comes to be our judge, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. In those days a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration that was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged, and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver the child. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child, and all who heard were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen, as it had been told them. The Gospel of the Lord. Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David, a savior who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. You will find a child, an infant, a tiny babe in a manger. You will find God incarnate wrapped in bands of cloth, lying in a manger. God, in a manger, tiny, vulnerable, needing his mother for nourishment and warmth, needing his father for protection and guidance, needing the world, this world, to carry his divine presence until the appointed time when the story shifts and we fall on our knees in need of him. God came into the world with vulnerability. God came into the world and God struggled. God felt pain. God wept. God experienced anger. God was fully human. God knew joy and pleasure. God tasted food and held hands. God was fully immersed in the material world. God was and God is with us. 
And this is what we know intimately when we call ourselves Christians. As Christians, we are in the world. We are the living body of Christ, acting with our hands and feet to be love in the midst of it all. We're not trying to escape this world for another. We are here. And even in our temptation to fix it all, to put in order the many broken pieces of our world, we are able to pause and to know that God is with us. In the midst of our pain and struggle, God is holding us. God knows intimately the nature of our struggle because God lived it. God fell on his knees and wept. God hung on a tree and knew betrayal. God knows our vulnerability, and he is closer to us in our vulnerability than we can ever fully understand. The Christmas story is therefore a story to lift us up with great joy. But perhaps more importantly, it is a story to ground us in the reality of our world. Because God was wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger, we are granted a sense of peace in this world. We do not have to chase God in philosophy and transcendence in books or lecture halls, although I find great satisfaction in these intellectual endeavors. But we may find God in the small and tangible things of this world. An infant wrapped in swaddling clothes, a warm embrace on a cold winter night, the smell of fresh fur as the tree is pulled in the door, the sound of giggles down the hall as the children try to stay up to hear reindeer bells. Now, I was ordained to the priesthood five years ago on December the 10th, and after that ordination service, I found a book on my desk that was left for me by a parishioner. The book was called On Living, and it was written by a hospice chaplain named Carrie Egan. She's a graduate of Harvard Divinity School and works in South Carolina. Her book is filled with stories of love and vulnerability with the real tangible stuff of God. She doesn't write theology or pontificate on theories of the incarnation, but just tells stories, stories of people's lives that have been shared with her as a chaplain. Carrie writes that what I didn't understand when I was a divinity student is that people talk to the chaplain about their families because that is how we talk about God. That is how we talk about the meaning in our lives. That is how we talk about the big spiritual questions of human existence. We don't live our lives in our heads in theology and theory. We live our lives in our families. The families we're born into, the families we create, the families we make through the people we choose as friends. This is where we create our lives. And this is where we find meaning. This is where our purpose becomes clear. Indeed, this is where the purpose of Jesus, of God incarnate, becomes clear. Jesus came into the world to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us to reconcile himself to us in our vulnerability, to share in our pain, and to give us new life as together we transform through our suffering. God is with us, not just in the joy of Christmas, but in the everyday events of our lives. In the mother washing her baby for the first time in a small tub, in the son spooning applesauce into the mouth of his father who no longer recognizes him, in the wife cupping the head of her husband as she awaits the nurse to adjust his bed. God is with us in the first dance and in the last breath as we fall on our knees with gratitude and as we drop to our knees in grief. God is here even when we have forgotten to give thanks and to pause for prayer, God is with us. And this is good news indeed. Good news of great joy for all people.